Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a bunch of Camp Cretaceous and Jurassic World figures and putting them up on my empty shelves right over here. Got a lot of shelves to fill, so let's get started with the brand new Spinosaurus and the Snap Squads. First up is the Camp Cretaceous Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. Let's open this up. Right. This is a huge figure. I have a few other Spinosauruses like this one. So the coloring's pretty realistic. It's not too crazy. It's brown on most of its body. It's got the red detailing on the spine, on the face. It's got those orange eyes. Its body is pretty adjustable. You can move the ankles, the legs, the tail, the arms. You can even adjust the neck like that, which is pretty cool. And it's got a button on the top of its head that you can use for chomping. Next up is the Camp Cretaceous Snap Squad Spinosaurus. This is a little one. You can still see that iconic spine right there. Let's open it up. As you can see, most of its limbs are pretty loose, so they actually just dangle there. And that is because you can snap this onto something and then it'll just dangle there. And just like the big Spinosaurus that we saw, this one has those dark orange eyes too. Let's check out our other Snap Squad figures. Next up is the Triceratops from the Snap Squad series. This figure is a dark red, kind of like a maroon color. It's got the yellow eyes and the yellow detailing right on the front. It's got the three horns and just like the other, its legs are dangly so that when you snap it onto something, its legs will dangle like that. And last but not least, the Snap Squad Carnotaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs. Let's get this opened up. All right, here it is. This Carnotaurus has a lighter color than most of the Carnotaurus figures I have. You can see it's got a light brown and then dark brown on the top. But like all the other Carnotauruses I have, you can see it's got the battle damage right there on its nose. That's really cool. All right, let's put all these new figures on the shelf. Let's start with the Spinosaurus, right in the dead center of this empty shelf right here. The Spinosauruses are usually pretty hard to balance, but this one's working out. And let's snap these Snap Squad figures right next to the Spinosaurus. Gonna hang the Carnotaurus upside down, right on the shelf. This little Spinosaurus, I think I'll attach to the big one, right on its hand. And the Triceratops, where should we put that one? Ooh, I know. Let's hang it right on the banner right here. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Let's fill up my shelves with the rest of these Camp Cretaceous figures. Let's start with this Ceratosaurus right here. This is gray and red mostly. You can see it's got some brown detailing on it. And it's got an action button for its jaws. That is really cool. Let's put it front and center, right next to the Spinosaurus. Here we've got a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is like a brown-orange color. You can see it's got a button on the top to control its jaw. And you can adjust the neck just like the Spinosaurus. And you can also adjust the rest of the limbs too. Let's put this one on this right shelf, right in the center. Next up, a huge Indominus Rex with battle damage on the side. This is the battle damage that you can turn on and off with the button. That is super cool. And still, the rest of the figure is pretty adjustable. You can adjust the legs and the arms and the neck too. And there's the action button on its tail to control its face. Let's put this Indominus Rex right next to the Spinosaurus, right in the middle. There we go. Here is another T-Rex. This T-Rex, when you move the tail, it controls the head. So it looks pretty realistic. This T-Rex is brown in color as well. You can see the browner stripe right along the top of its body and a light underbelly. There we go, two T-Rexes side by side. Here is a slightly smaller carnivore. This is the Carnotaurus. And just like the Snap Squad figure that we saw earlier, you can see that battle damage right on its nose. 
How cool is that? And it's pretty detailed on its body. You can see there's black specks all over its mostly red body with a lighter underbelly. So let's find a place for this on the shelf. Let's go over to this side right here. Put it right next to this Velociraptor. Here's another giant Indominus Rex, but check out the coloring on this. This is totally different than the gray one that we have over there. This is a custom colored one. So it's got blue, purple, orange, and black, plus those green eyes right there. That is really cool. Let's find a spot for this on the shelf. Let's put it on the other side of the Spinosaurus. All right, there it is. This first shelf is looking pretty full already. Check this one out. This is a gray and yellow Allosaurus, I believe. Look at that action button right on its back to control its jaw. This is pretty cool. And it's a fully adjustable body as well. Let's put these right next to the T-Rexes. Here is a T-Rex with a very special feature. With this action button, you can see that it has a tearing action. That is pretty unique. Not that many figures that I have do that. So let's find a place for this right next to the Carnotaurus. Here is an herbivore. This is a Triceratops. It's a red maroon color with brown detailing on the top. And it's got an action button that you can press to roar. Seems like the sound effects aren't really working right now, but this is a pretty detailed figure. Looks like a little discoloration on its leg right there. Or maybe that's intentional. I actually can't tell. Let's put this on this higher up shelf right here. And we've still got a few more T-Rexes in here. This one is a battle damage, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And press the button to turn the battle damage on and off. And this T-Rex is fully posable, so when you open its mouth, it actually stays open. You don't have to press a button. Let's put this right next to this other Terran T-Rex right here. There we go, got a little more space. Here is, I believe, another Allosaurus. This Allosaurus, though, is yellow with blue coloring all over its body. You can see that there's two different tones of blue the light blue and the dark blue, plus the two action buttons on its back, one to control the jaw and one to control the arms. Let's put this right next to this other Allosaurus. All right, looking awesome. Here is a Baryonyx. This has probably one of my favorite colorings of the Baryonyx figures that I have. Two tones of green, got the dark green in the front and the bright green in the back, got some yellow detailing and some bread right next to its eyes. Let's put this right next to the Triceratops up top here. Here's a weird looking dinosaur. This is a Sarcosagus. It's got a dark purple, it's got some orange, got red, and then the rest of its body is like a blue gray color. You can move all of its legs, and it's pretty adjustable actually, and you can move the tail to control the head. Let's put this right in between the Spinosaurus and the Indominus Rex. Oh, we've got another T-Rex right here. This T-Rex I don't think has battle damage or anything like that. So this is just a normal T-Rex. It's got the button on the top of its head for the roaring action. Let's put this T-Rex right next to the other T-Rexes. Here's an interesting looking herbivore. This is a Kentrosaurus. Check out those huge spikes right along its shoulders as well as the spikes on its tail, just like a Stegosaurus. And this Kentrosaurus has a sliding action to swing those spikes back and forth. That is really cool. Let's put this right next to the Baryonyx up top right here. Here's another Baryonyx. This one has bright orange detailing right on the top of its head. The rest of its body is brown and a dark gray blue color right along the top. Let's check out this action button too. Let's put it next to these T-Rexes and Carnotaurus right here. 
this dinosaur, I believe, is an Aranosaurus. It's pretty unique in its shape and color. Look at that bright blue right along its mouth. It's got some yellow on its spine, and it's got a light underbelly as well. Plus, this Aranosaurus has a slide action. All right, let's find a place for this. Let's put it right next to the Sarcosagus, right up front. Here is another herbivore. This is a Cynoceratops. You can see it looks pretty similar to the Triceratops, but the big difference is in its horns and its face. Plus, it's got an action button on the back to control its head as well. Let's put this Cynoceratops right next to the Kentrosaurus, right up top. Here's another predator. This is a medium-sized figure, and this is the Metriocanthosaurus. It's got the action button on its back to control its jaw, and the rest of its body is like a yellow-green color and darker green along the top. Let's put this right in front of these T-Rexes right over here. Here's another predator. This is an Albertosaurus. This dinosaur has an all-green body with orange detailing right along its back all the way up to its head. And this figure has the action button on its tail to control its jaw. <laughs> Next up is a Ceratosaurus with dark green coloring and black detailing along its back. And this Ceratosaurus has the slide action to open and close its jaw in multiple degrees. <laughs> Let's put this Ceratosaurus right next to the other one, right here. Next up, we've got another mighty Triceratops with a brown body and two tones of blue. You got the dark blue in the back and the light blue in the front. And with this Triceratops, you can actually control the head with the tail. You can twist it back and forth. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you can control its head. Put this Triceratops right next to the Sinoceratops. Here's a different looking dinosaur. This is the Suchomimus. It's got a super long and narrow snout. This dinosaur is blue and yellow in color and it has one action button that you press to control the head. Let's put this Suchomimus next to, you know what? Let's put him on this lower shelf right next to Godzilla. Over here, we've got a small little one. This is Ankylosaurus Bumpy. And as you can see, we've actually got a full-size Ankylosaurus with the same coloring as Bumpy. Let's check both of these out. So Bumpy's pretty small. It doesn't have any action buttons, but you can adjust the head and the legs and the tail as well. But the adult one has an action on it. Let's check that out. Just like many of the other figures we've seen, this Ankylosaurus has a slide action on its back. And can you guess what that does? It swings its tail around. That is really cool. Let's put these Ankylosauruses right on the shelf. Check it out, it is another Carnotaurus. This one is more brightly colored than the other ones that we've seen. You can see all those bumps and spikes on its back. It's got the dark brown on the top, and it's like a red orange on the sides and a gray underbelly. Let's put this Carnotaurus right next to these T-Rexes right over here. This is looking pretty awesome. This is like the carnivore shelf so far. Here we've got another Albertosaurus, but this one has battle damage. You can see it's got the stomach that's actually pretty squishy. Then you can slide down the ribs and they click in place. And then you can actually cover it up all the way. Let's put this Albertosaurus right next to the other one. Here's another big figure. This is a Stegosaurus with a mostly green body and some brown and tan detailing. That is really cool. Let's put this Stegosaurus next to these Ankylosauruses down here. 
All right, we've got even another Allosaurus with the slide action for its jaw. This figure is a dark green color all around its body, and it's got the light tan and red detailing right along its neck, and those red eyes too. Let's put this dinosaur next to this Indominus Rex, right in the front. Here is our last medium-sized dinosaur of the bin. This is a Baryonyx, and it's got green on the belly and sides, and then two tones of brown. Got the light brown in the back and the dark brown in the front and more light brown right on top of its head too. Let's put this Baryonyx right next to this Baryonyx over here. All right, that shelf is just about full. Let's go ahead and grab these Velociraptors. We got one, two, and three. Check out the different coloring on these. We've got a bright red and green Velociraptor. We've got a dark gray and yellow Velociraptor. And we've also got a bright orange, yellow, and brown Velociraptor. Yeah. Let's put all of these Velociraptors together on this front shelf right here. Second one right here. And the third one right here. Right next to the Atrociraptor. Some interesting looking smaller dinosaurs. I believe this is a Protoceratops. <laughs> this one is a super light green on its side and the yellow detailing all over its body. Let's put this Protoceratops right here. Next up, we've got a dark red Minmi with spikes all over its top. <laughs> Let's put this dinosaur right in the front, right in front of the Spinosaurus. Over here, we've got a Zunoceratops. It's got the two spikes in the front, and it's got a bright green body with the dark gray-blue coloring on the top and all in the front, too. Oh. Let's put this Zunoceratops right in front of this Triceratops right here. Check out the spikes on this Sauropelta. It's got a bright red body along the top with brown on the bottom. Oh. Let's put this Sora Pelta right in front of the Indominus Rex. I believe this dinosaur is a Monolophosaurus. This dinosaur has a light brown body with gray detailing on the top and on its feet too. Let's put this dinosaur right up top here next to the Pyroraptor. Here is a winged dinosaur with battle damage on its wing. That's interesting. This, I believe, is a Pteranodon. <sighs> Let's put this Pteranodon on top of the Indominus Rex. I think it'll rest there really good. Just a few more dinosaurs left. This is a Tanystrophius. This dinosaur lives in the water. And this figure has an action. When you pull down on the tail, it moves its neck up and down. <laughs> Let's put this dinosaur way over here next to the Triceratops. Here is another winged dinosaur. This is a Dimorphodon. This dinosaur has a shorter snout compared to the Pteranodon. And you can see that it's got some dark red or maroon coloring right on the underside of its wings. Let's put this flying dinosaur right up top. This T-Rex right here. Next up, we've got a bright green Draco Rex with gray striping along the top of its body. It's got a bunch of horns on its head. You can adjust the neck, the head, the arms, and the legs. I think you can twist the tail too. Let's put this Draco Rex right next to this Minmi. Here is a Stiggy Malak. This dinosaur is a orange-red color along its body with darker detailing along all of its body. It's got the light underbelly, it's got the horns on its head, and of course, the super hard head for headbutting. <laughs> and our last dinosaur is a Gallimimus. 
This dinosaur is a light tan along its body. You can see it's got some striping on the top. Plus, it's got an action button to move the legs back and forth for running. Let's put this right next to the Stiggy Malak up top here. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're gonna to be checking out some of Jurassic World's most popular dinosaurs. I've got two whole shelves here set up with some of those popular dinosaurs. So let's get started at the bottom over here with some of these super colossal figures. This first one is actually the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. It's got the darker body with the brown and black detailing and the yellow eyes. It's pretty cool. Right next to it, we've got the Atrociraptor figure. This figure is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it has some of that cool striping that you can see in the movie. And right next to it, we've actually got the super colossal Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue stripe and the light green body too. That's pretty cool. And look at all those teeth too. Right next to Velociraptor Blue, we've got Carnotaurus Toro. Check out that battle damage right there on the nose. That's really cool. And it's got the two huge horns on its head and the iconic brown and clay red coloring on its body. Over here on the next lower shelf, I've got all T-Rexes. T-Rexes are obviously some of the most popular Jurassic World figures. This first one is a light blue-gray color. It's got some red eyes and a huge set of teeth. There's also this orange T-Rex right here that I believe came out during the Fallen Kingdom movie. And it's just as big as this one. I've also got a camo super colossal T-Rex. This one's a bit older, so it is more fragile, but it also has some battle damage on its side as well. And then the last super colossal T-Rex that I have on this shelf is this awesome fire T-Rex. Check out that coloring that it has on it and those creepy white eyes too. That is so cool. Moving up a level, let's see what other figures I have in my most popular collection. I've got some Atrociraptor figures right here. I've got an orange one. I've got this tan crawling one. I've got two white and brown striped ones right there. And this one is actually a custom colored one that I did pretty recently. You should go check out the video where I painted it if you haven't seen it yet. Next up, we've got some classic Stegosaurus figures of varying colors. I've got a teal one, I've got a green one, and I've got a gray blue one set up on this shelf right now. And they all look pretty similar in design and their shape. It looks like the coloring is pretty much the biggest difference between them. Then right next to those ones, I've got a few Triceratops figures on this shelf too. This first one is the Hammond collection. So it's pretty cool with the color detailing. Look at how worn those horns are on the front. This one in the back here is actually one that I custom colored. So this one is also in that custom painting video that I did a while back. You should check it out. Right next to the Triceratops, I have the Therizinosaurus figures. I first got this miniature Therizinosaurus with a little bit less detailing, but then I got this huge one that's got the gray claws, the awesome red stripe on its back, and a few action buttons on it as well. Right next to that, I've got one of the stars of the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. These are the Giganotosauruses. This first one is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus. So it's quite a bit smaller, but it has some pretty cool sound effects. And I've also got this larger one that has a slashing and tearing action using the action buttons on its tail. It's really cool. And moving on to the next shelf, I've got a few Endoraptor figures from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. There's this one on the far left that's really poseable. I've also got the basic one hidden in the back here. It can move a lot less, but it still looks really cool. And then I've got my largest Endoraptor figure that actually has a few action buttons. It can open and close its jaw and it can swing its arms back and forth too. 
Right beside those ferocious predators, I've got more carnivores. These are the Carnotaurus figures. I've got Carnotauruses of all shapes and colors. I've got a small baby looking one. I've also got the dark brown, there's some clay red ones. Also got some others in the back over there too. So I have quite a few Carnotaurus figures. And right next to that, I've got some of my largest Indominus Rex figures. This first Indominus Rex here is the Battle Damage Edition. You can see the slashes on its side that you can turn on and off and reveal the red underneath. I've also got one from the original Jurassic World movie right here. It actually is pretty rubbery, which is interesting. And I've also got these smaller baby looking Indominus Rex and the classic huge figure right here too. On the next level are some of my coolest T-Rex figures, and you can bet that these are super popular. I've got this gray and brown T-Rex with the button on the top of its head to open and close the jaw. There's also this light brown one that's probably my favorite because you can actually control it using the tail to open and close its mouth and to move its neck around too. It's super realistic looking. I've also got the Hammond Collection T-Rex, which is one of the scariest looking T-Rexes I have. I think because of its eyes. They kind of look like they're glowing almost. And right next to that, I've also got the Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. So this is one of the newest T-Rexes I have other than this Hammond Collection T-Rex right here. And right next to these dinosaurs, I've got a big group of Spinosaurus figures. These are one of my favorite species and I've got quite a few different colors. Looks like I've got three colors here and then I've also got the miniature version that's the same color as this one up here. All these figures are really cool, plus they all have the button on the top of their head to open and close the jaw. That's so cool. Right next to the Spinosauruses, we've got some smaller but still ferocious predators. I've got some Baryonyx figures right here. This one is from the Hammond collection, and I've also got a few others that are gray, blue in color. I've got a green one right here in the back as well. Right next to those, I've got some of my favorite Allosaurus figures. This first one is green, it's got some red and white on it. There's also a tan and blue one. And my favorite one is this huge Allosaurus figure that I bought pretty recently. This is the Battle Damage Edition. So you can actually open up the Battle Damage on its side and close it back up, which is really cool. Plus, this Allosaurus figure is probably twice the size of these other Allosaurus figures that I have as well. Look at the difference between them. And check it out right next to it. You probably already saw it a little bit. This is a Mosasaurus figure. This figure is ginormous. It has a huge jaw that you can open and close and you can adjust the flippers as well. Plus, it's got some pretty cool coloring as well. It's dark blue, but it has these white specks all over it just to give it a bit more texture. And it's super bumpy on the top of its back too. It's got all these ridges all along it, which looks really cool. All right, moving on to the top shelf. Over here, we've got a few Ceratosaurus figures. All these figures are pretty small compared to T-Rexes and stuff like that, but they're still pretty cool and they're pretty different with their coloring. This one's a super bright red. I've got this brown one and I've got a gray and red one in the back way over there. But an even bigger predator from Jurassic World is the Scorpios Rex. I've got two types on the shelf right here. This first one is the larger figure and it has two action buttons one for the arms and one for the jaw. And I've also got this smaller one that's like a dark green color. This one doesn't have any action buttons, but it is still super poseable. You can move its arms and its elbows and its legs. It's really cool how you can pose it in all different ways. Right next to that, I've got a few Ankylosaurus figures, all with different coloring. Check that out. I've got a clay red one, I've got a brown one, I've got a yellow one, and they all have those super long spikes on the sides, and then the shorter spikes along the top of their shell. And over here, I've got a couple Dimetrodon figures. I bet you recognize these from the Jurassic World Dominion movie. This figure on the right here is actually an extreme battle damage, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw at the bottom. You can turn it on and off, just like that. Really cool, and I love the color difference between these. Although they're pretty similar, I like that it's uh, a little bit different. On the next shelf over here, I've got a big collection of Velociraptors. But this isn't even all of the Velociraptors that I own. I own so many, but some of these are some of the coolest, I think. I've got the Amber Collection Velociraptor Blue right here. I've got a bunch more smaller ones of different colors. There's a brown, a red, some green ones. 
Here's another amber collection Velociraptor and a smaller version of Velociraptor Blue at the very end. Right next to that, we've got another star of the Jurassic World Dominion movie. These are the Pyroraptors. I've got two right here that are pretty similar looking, but this one actually has battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. It's pretty small, but you can see that red click back and forth, which is a really cool feature. And then there's also this giant Pyroraptor. It's a basic figure, so it can't do too much. Its jaw doesn't open or close or anything like that but it is a whole lot bigger than these other figures, which is really cool. And finally, over here, we've got some awesome Dilophosaurus figures of a bunch of different colors. A lot of them are green, but you can see on their frills, they've got some red, some of them got yellow, some of them got purple. It's really cool. And of course, I've got this huge Dilophosaurus figure right here. It is also a basic figure, just like the Pyroraptor. So you can't open and close the mouth, but you can move the frills and you can move the legs and the tail as well. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my collection of Stegosaurus, Dilophosaurus, and Baryonyx figures and putting them up on this empty space on my shelf. I've even got a brand new set to unbox, but first of all, I want to show you something I've never shown before. This is a vintage Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus statue. It's got a huge frill and it's even got some plants at the base of it too. This is really cool, super old, and I'm gonna put this right here on this top shelf. Let's go ahead and dig into the rest of my Dilophosaurus figures. This first one is the basic red Dilophosaurus. You can actually open and close the frills and it's got a huge yellow crown on the top of its head. So let's put this Dilophosaurus right over here on the Dilophosaurus shelf. Next up, I've got another basic but giant Dilophosaurus figure. This one is the teal green blue coloring with the bright red frills in the front and the bright red crown on the very top. Let's go ahead and put this next to my other giant basic Dilophosaurus figure. It's looking good already. Let's see what other Dilophosaurus figures I have in here. This one is another vintage figure. This is a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which I think is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and set this one down on the shelf as well. Right over here, we've got a miniature Dilophosaurus figure with bright yellow and red frills, and it's got the green body as well. That's really cool. It's pretty small, but you can still open and close the frills too. And let's set this down right next to the other one. Next up is a gray Dilophosaurus with red and white on its frills. And this Dilophosaurus actually has an action that when you pull up on the tail, it'll open its mouth and open its frills too. Let's go ahead and set down this Dilophosaurus too. Next up is a bright purple Dilophosaurus with red, yellow, orange all over its frills and some red on its body as well. This figure is a little bit bigger, but it doesn't have any action buttons to activate the jaws or the frills. Let's see if we can fit this Dilophosaurus right in between the two large ones. Perfect. Right over here, we've got a green, orange, and yellow Dilophosaurus, and this one actually has the lever action that'll open its mouth and its frills. Look how fast that is too, that's really cool. Let's set this Dilophosaurus down right on the end here. Two more Dilophosauruses to go. Here is a dark green and black one, and it's got super bright red on its frills. And this figure is actually one of the new Jurassic World Dominion Dilophosauruses. So this is probably one of my most recent Dilophosaurus figures. And our last Dilophosaurus is another mini green Dilophosaurus, but this one has brown on its back, and it's got red and yellow on its frills too. <laughs> This is looking great so far. All right, let's move on to the Stegosauruses. But first, let's actually open up this brand new Jurassic World set. This is the Dr. Sarah Harding and Stegosaurus pack. And the box is even designed to look like a truck, which is really cool.
All right, so this set comes with three figures. It's first got the giant Stegosaurus figure with some pretty unique coloring. I don't have one with this coloring yet. It's also got a baby Stegosaurus right there. And of course, Dr. Sarah Harding on the side. Let's check out the giant Stegosaurus first. So it looks about the same as many of the other Stegosaurus figures, but it has this clay red coloring on the top and then the green on the sides and then a brown underbelly, which is really cool. And like many of the Stegosaurus figures, it has an action that when you press down here, it swings its tail back and forth. Next up is the baby Stegosaurus figure. It has similar coloring as the adult. It's got the green on the sides and the brown underbelly and the red on top, but it is a whole lot smaller. And look at that, even the spikes on its tail are a lot smaller too. It's pretty cute. And here is Dr. Sarah Harding. She's even got a camera wrapped around her neck as well. It's pretty cool. Taking photos of the Stegosauruses. Bingo! Let's put Dr. Harding and the baby Stegosaurus right next to the Dilophosaurus figures. This is where our Stegosaurus domain will start. And let's put the adult Stegosaurus right next to them. Look how big this Stegosaurus is in comparison to this baby Stegosaurus. All right, let's get the rest of these Stegosauruses up here. This first one is a vintage Jurassic Park Stegosaurus with a huge battle damage on its shoulder. And it's even got some similar coloring as to the Stegosauruses that I just opened up as well. So why don't we put this one right next to that one? Moving right along, we've got a light blue and green Stegosaurus figure. It's got some pretty good detailing on its side. It's got the darker green on the top. And this figure also has the action that swings its tail back and forth. Well, it looks like we're out of room on this shelf, so why don't we move down to this other shelf that I cleared out to make space. Right here, we've got a dark gray blue Stegosaurus with a light pink underbelly. It's totally different coloring, but this figure also has that same action that when you press down on its back, it swings its tail back and forth. Two more Stegosauruses to go. Here is a green, brown, and tan Stegosaurus, and this one has a slightly different action. It still swings with its tail, but it actually swings its entire back torso, so it's different from the other Stegosaurus figures. So it's a pretty cool feature. Let's set this down right next to these other Stegosauruses. And here is the final Stegosaurus. It's got a light underbelly with brown on the sides and tan and green on the top. That is different from all the other ones that I have up here still. So let's set this one down right here at the end of the line. All right, that's all my Stegosauruses. Now it's time for the final dinosaur, the Baryonyx figures. Let's start with this one right up front here, this is a battle damage Baryonyx with the brown and dark gray blue coloring on the top. Let's set this Baryonyx down right next to the Stegosauruses and the rest of this shelf will be for only the Baryonyxes. Let's see what we've got next. Here is another battle damage Baryonyx. This one is actually the same as this one. So we're gonna put it in the back right here. Next up, we've got a bright green and brown Baryonyx. And of course, it's got a button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this down right here on our Baryonyx shelf. Here is another Baryonyx figure, but this one has lighter green coloring and it has only one shade of brown on its head. Plus, this figure has a slide lever action to activate the jaw and sound effects. Let's put this figure down right next to our other green Baryonyx. We've got another dark green Baryonyx figure here. This one is, I think, the same as the first green Baryonyx. So we're just gonna put this down in the back here. Next up, we've got a gray, dark blue, and light blue Baryonyx with the slide lever action on its back. So you can get a ton of different sound effects. This is the first gray Baryonyx figure on the shelf, so we're gonna put it right up front here. Here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx. So this one has a bit more detailing and a whole lot more points of articulation on its body. This one is super poseable. I really like this one, so why don't we put this on the front of the shelf as well? 
And this is our final large Baryonyx of the bin. This one has some super bright blue reflective paint on the top of its head, which I think is a really cool detail. And let's set this big Baryonyx down in the back here. And our last two Baryonyxes of the bin are these vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx figures. These ones are totally different from the new Baryonyx figures that Mattel is releasing now. Look how different in size they are, but I'm gonna place this one right up front here. And let's grab our other vintage Jurassic Park Baryonyx and place it down right in front next to the other old Jurassic Park Baryonyx. And that is it. My new shelf displays are complete. I've got the Dilophosauruses, Stegosauruses, and finally the Baryonyxes. Welcome back. Today I've got a ton of Allosauruses, Carnotauruses, and Spinosauruses and I'm gonna be putting them all up on this empty space on my display shelves. Let's start with this big old custom colored Spinosaurus figure. This figure was custom painted a long time ago and has a ton more detail than a lot of the other Spinosaurus figures and is one of my favorites because of that color coding. Let's grab some of these other Spinosauruses. This is the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus with the tan and the red spine and red face. Why don't we put that one right next to the custom colored one right over here. And here's another giant Spinosaurus figure. I believe this one is the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus. So it's got different coloring than the Camp Cretaceous dinosaur, but it has the same red spine and the red face as well. Look at the color difference with their eyes. Next up, I actually just bought another custom colored Spinosaurus. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. All right, so this is a Hammond Collection Spinosaurus that has been custom colored by someone that I purchased from on eBay. It's still got the red spine, but it's got some cool blue coloring. It's got red along its back. It's got a bunch of white, pretty good detailing. This is really cool. And it's got some darker green eyes as well. So let's put this right in front of these bigger Spinosaurus figures. <sighs> All right, let's dig into some of these Carnotaurus figures. This first one is one of the darker versions, so it's a brown with black spots on its back. And of course, it's got the action button on its tail to open and close its mouth with sound effects too. So let's put this right here next to our Spinosaurus figures. And let's go ahead and grab some of these other Carnotaurus figures too. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Sound Surge Carnotaurus figure. There's a button right at the top that you can use to activate the sound effects. And you can see by putting them side by side the color difference between the two. This one is a lot brighter. And I've even got some more brighter ones in here too. This Carnotaurus is one of my brightest Carnotauruses. It's got a bright yellow and then it fades into the brown on the top. And just like the Carnotaurus on the far right, it also has the button on its tail for the chomping and you can use its tail to move its head around too. I've still got quite a few Carnotaurus figures in here. This one is a darker red with almost purplish coloring along the top. And it's a bit smaller than these large Carnotaurus figures right here. Just a little bit smaller and it has a different action. There's a button right at the top of its back for chomping its neck back and forth. It's a little stuck though. Let's see here, I think I've got some more Spinosaurus figures in here. This one is not made by Mattel, it's a model Spinosaurus. So it's got some pretty cool different coloring, but unfortunately you can't move any of the body parts. Let's see if we got a little bit more room up here, we might have to move the Carnotauruses over. Let's see if we can set this Spinosaurus down. Way down here is another Spinosaurus figure, another model, but with entirely different coloring. It's got the red spine, like many of these Spinosaurus figures, but it's got a much darker body. Let's set this down. I think we're gonna have to move the Carnotauruses. So I'm just gonna put this one here for now and move the Carnotauruses down to the next level. Let's see what else. Let's start with the Allosauruses. This is my biggest Allosaurus figure and it is the extreme battle damage version from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's set this down on the far corner of the lower shelf. I've got my Carnotauruses already set up over here and the Spinosauruses on the next level. 
Let's go ahead and grab another Allosaurus figure. I've got a gray and yellow one, a whole lot smaller than this Jurassic World Dominion figure, but still pretty cool. It has an action on its back for snapping the jaw. And moving right along, let's grab this Spinosaurus figure. This is an old one, a Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. So it looks way different compared to these new ones over here. Let's go ahead and set it down next to these model Spinosauruses. Right over here, we've got another Allosaurus figure. This one has the tan and two-toned blue coloring. It's got two actions on its back, one for clamping the jaw and one for swinging the arms. Set this down right next to the gray and yellow Allosaurus. Let's see, all right, another Carnotaurus figure. This is a model Carnotaurus figure. It's got some really cool coloring patterns and it's got a bright orange face, which is unlike any of the Mattel figures. Let's put this Carnotaurus much smaller down right there. Here's another small Carnotaurus, but this one is made by Mattel. This is actually from Jurassic World Dominion. So it's got different coloring compared to the rest of the older Carnotaurus figures. And it's also got a broken horn. Right over here, we've got another old Jurassic Park figure, but this one is an Allosaurus figure. This one actually has battle damage that you can take on and off its body. It's really cool how you can remove them completely. Let's put this down right next to the other Allosaurus figures. Oh, uh, you know what? I've got this huge Carnotaurus figure right here. This is the super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. It is ginormous and you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs that'll go into its stomach compartment. I think this dinosaur will have to go on the very top shelf. That's the only place that has space, I think. Check it out, super tall. Here is another Spinosaurus figure. This one has the same coloring as the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, but is a lot smaller and is actually the basic version because you can't open and close its mouth. Looks like we've got some more model Carnotaurus figures. This one has some really cool spikes all along its back and some really interesting coloring as well. Let's set this down right in front of these larger Mattel Carnotauruses. Ooh, check out this Spinosaurus figure. This one is actually posed as if it's swimming through the water, which if you know, Spinosauruses actually did hunt in the water. So this is pretty cool. Let's put this at the end. Looks like we got a little more space for a few more Spinosaurus figures. This Allosaurus figure is pretty recent. I believe it is a Camp Cretaceous Allosaurus and has the slide lever action for roaring and for moving the mouth. Well, it looks like we're running out of room on the lower shelf. Hopefully we have enough space for the rest of the Allosauruses and Carnotauruses. Here's another model Carnotaurus figure. This one is like a green yellow coloring. It still has some red detailing along the top and it is in this really cool roaring pose. This might be the smallest Carnotaurus figure that I have on my shelf so far. Next up is another big old Allosaurus figure. I believe this one has pretty similar coloring to the extreme battle damage Allosaurus, but it has a slide lever action on its back for a bunch of different roars and chomping actions. I think we have enough space for one more Allosaurus right there, perfect. Looks like we've got a juvenile Spinosaurus model figure right here. This one is by Papo. It's got some pretty cool detailing and coloring and still see some green along its spine right there. It's really cool. Now let's put this at the top shelf along with all the other Spinosaurus figures. Here's some figures that I don't show too often on the channel. This is a Snap Squad Spinosaurus by Jurassic World. It's a little itty bitty figure and it actually has a spring-loaded mouth so you can clamp it onto stuff. But I just wanna stand it up right here so it's right next to the, all the other figures. Here's another Snap Squad figure, but this one is actually a Carnotaurus. And you can see that even this one has the battle damage right on the front of its face too. All right, looks like there's a little bit of space left. Let's see if we can stand this one up. There we go. And the remaining biggest figure is another Carnotaurus, but this one is gray and it's almost like a gray-blue coloring. It's got some red right there on its neck and some interesting bumps and texturing all over its body. <laughs> all right, let's see where we can set this down, maybe right here in the corner. All right, all that's left are these teeny, tiny figures. These are both Spinosaurus figures from Jurassic World, 
And they are really small, but they have different coloring, which is pretty cool. You've got this gray and green one, as well as this brown and black Spinosaurus. And the final figure for this shelf build is this Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World. And I think this actually came from McDonald's, so it was part of a Happy Meal or something. But it is officially part of Jurassic World. So let's put this down next to all the other Carnotaurus figures. Whoops, knocked over a few. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you this new display shelf full of my newest and my most favorite dinosaur figures from Jurassic World. And I've got some brand new ones that we're gonna open up as well. But let's get started with the super colossal figures at the bottom. The first that I'm gonna show you is the Jurassic World Dominion super colossal T-Rex with the darker brown coloring and black detailing along the top. It's got the bright yellow eyes and is probably standing at like two or three feet tall. I've also got the Jurassic World Dominion Atrociraptor figure in the white and brown striping. You can see that striping along its back. It's got some huge legs compared to the T-Rex arms over here. And it's also got a huge set of teeth. Next of the super colossal figures is this Giganotosaurus figure from Dominion as well. It's got the classic green coloring with some awesome detailing and a huge spine along its back. It's got some reflective gold eyes and some really unique teeth. It's also got a wider mouth as well. I think it's super cool how the teeth fit in together perfectly. On the next level is the first of the new dinosaurs that'll be opening up right here. This first one, I believe is pronounced the Eocarcharia. This is part of the Dino Trackers from Jurassic World that just came out. So let's open it up and check it out. Here it is fully unboxed and it's a pretty sizable figure. It's got some pretty cool coloring. It's got the light green, dark blue, and the red on the top of its head. You can tell that there's feather detailing along a lot of its body. I've noticed that since Jurassic World Dominion, they've been adding feathers to a lot of the design of these new dinosaurs. And there's an action button on its back for rotating the head back and forth, along with sound effects too. That's pretty cool. The next new dinosaur to open up is this Dino Trackers Stegosaurus figure. Let's check it out. All right, here it is. This Stegosaurus has totally different coloring than all of the other Stegosauruses that I have in my collection so far. It's got some green, some black, some white, some red, some really cool detailing. Plus it came with this strap to put on its back as well as part of the Dino Tracker. And this Stegosaurus has an action button on its back to swing the tail back and forth, as well as up and down with the button on the other side. Let's see what else I've got on this shelf though. Over here on the far left, I've got the Extreme Battle Damage Allosaurus figure. This is my largest Allosaurus figure, and it also has a button for chomping and roaring. Behind it, I've got the Therizinosaurus figure. This figure is actually pretty big. It's got some awesome huge claws and some pretty cool coloring along its back and sides as well. And this figure has a chomping action with its mouth as well. Behind that, I've got the Mega Raptor figure that is red, blue, and a little bit of a tan white color as well. You can see that this one also has some feather detailing along its tail and a little bit along its body, and it's got a chomping action as well. Next up is the Yang Chuanasaurus figure, which is quite a bit bigger than the Mega Raptor figure right here. And this figure has a feature where you can move its tail around to control its head and its neck as well and open and close its jaws. Next up is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. This figure has similar coloring to many of the Ceratosaurus figures I have, especially with that red along its head and its neck. But the coolest thing about this figure is how poseable it is and how much more detailed its body is. Behind that, we've got the huge T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. Once again, with the darker brown coloring and with this figure, you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw as well. 
And the last figures on this shelf is actually a pack of Stegosauruses and a character with a camera. We've got a baby Stegosaurus right here and then the adult Stegosaurus right behind it and they have matching colors, which is really cool. Now let's move up to the next shelf where we've got another two brand new dinosaur figures to open up. This first one's pretty wild looking. This is the Diabloceratops. Let's check it out. This is one wild looking dinosaur. It reminds me of a Triceratops and a Pentaceratops because it has this huge frill in the front it's got these crazy horns though. These are ginormous. It's got the red body, which makes it look pretty evil, I will say. And it has an action button on its back that you can use to twist its head back and forth too. That's pretty wild. Now let's check out this other new toy. This is the uncaged Click Tracker Atrociraptor figure. So this dinosaur comes with the figure itself and a remote as well. And this figure actually follows this remote. So let's check it out. Let's turn it on. And watch this. If I click it, it'll sense where I'm clicking it and it'll charge toward it. All right, let's put it all the way back here and let's try it way up here. That's pretty cool. So it charges kind of at wherever the remote is. All right, let's move on to the other dinosaurs that I have on this shelf. Over here, I believe this is the Siamusaurus. This is a really long dinosaur. It stands on all four legs, but it's also got a huge mouth as well and a spine just like a Spinosaurus. Right next to that, I've got the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. It's pretty realistic with its coloring, so there's no super bright colors or anything like that, but it's got some really cool detailing, a lot more texture than many of the other Triceratops figures that I have. And I've actually got another Triceratops figure right here. This one has a bit brighter coloring. And as you can hear, this Triceratops comes with sound effects too. Right next to that, we've got an Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and this figure has an action where you press down on its back and it moves its head up and down with sound effects too. Back here, we've got the Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus figure. So this figure is a lot more poseable than usual, and it has some coloring that's pretty different from the other Parasaurolophus figures that I have too. And let's move on. We've already seen the Diabloceratops figure. Back here, we've got a pair of Rajasaurus figures. This first one is brown with blue coloring, and it has an action where you press down on its body for chomping. And there's also this dark blue Ragosaurus that has the same attack feature too. Next to that, we've got a custom Hammond Collection Spinosaurus figure. So this figure has the huge spine on its back and it also has some pretty cool coloring as well. Way back behind that, we've got a Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It's got the dark color on the top and then the lighter sides and the light underbelly as well. Next up, I've got a big old Atrociraptor figure. This is the basic edition, but it still has the awesome coloring and the super bright red eyes. <laughs> behind that, I've got the Pyroraptor figure in the basic edition. It's got the classic red and black coloring and the really cool feathers right on top of its head. And the final dinosaur on this shelf level is the Chronosaurus. This is an aquatic dinosaur, and it also has this little lever action on its back to twist its head back and forth and open and close its mouth. All right, now let's move up to the final shelf level. Over here on the right, I've got a crawling Atrociraptor figure with the tan and brown striping. Next to that, I've got the Moros Intrepidus figure. This one has some brighter coloring and some really cool feather detailing along the top of its head. I've also got this extreme battle damage dinosaur that I actually can't remember the name of it. So if you know what it is, let me know in the comments below, but it's got the extreme battle damage right on the side that you can turn on and off. Next to that is another extreme battle damage dinosaur. This is the Pyroraptor. Once again, with those really cool feathers on the top of its head, and the battle damage right on its side that you can click on and off. Next to that, I've got some human figures from Jurassic World. First up, I've got Dr. Ian Malcolm standing right beside this Parasaurolophus. 
Right next to that, I've got Owen and another Parasaurolophus. This one has some really cool blue and gold detailing along its body. And there's also a lasso that comes with this set as well. Up next, I've got a pair of Dimetrodon figures from Jurassic World Dominion. Both have a super tall orange or red spine. And this figure up front right here actually has extreme battle damage as well. And way over here, I've got a few Funko Pop figures from Jurassic World Dominion. I've got the Giganotosaurus figure. I've got the T-Rex figure. And I've also got the Therizinosaurus figure with some really crazy bright coloring. This is totally different than what you see in the movie. And finally, on the very top shelf, I've got a humongous dinosaur. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure, and it has probably the longest neck out of any of my Jurassic World figures. And it's got a lot of texturing along its body, which makes it look really lifelike and cool. It's got some cool coloring, and you can still open and close its mouth, too. Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge bin full of Jurassic World Predators. And as you can see on my display shelves over here, I've got some empty space. So we are doing a shelf build today. Let's get started with one of the craziest looking Predators in the bin. This is a custom colored T-Rex figure. It's got fire coloring all over its body. This figure has some pretty awesome designing and I especially love the eyes on this figure. There's no pupil in this one. So it actually looks a bit more sinister, I think, besides the super fiery color. So let's actually put them right in the middle of this shelf right here. Here is another special T-Rex figure. This is the Hammond Collection figure. It has quite a bit more detailing on its body. They did a better job with the painting and all the limbs are pretty movable. So this figure is very poseable and we're gonna put it right next to the fire T-Rex. Back here is another super bright and custom colored T-Rex. This is an Indominus Rex figure, but custom colored with a blue, purple, black, and orange, and the coolest part of all, the green eyes. These Indominus Rex figures are ginormous and are probably some of the largest Predator figures that I have in my entire collection. So let's put this on the middle shelf right here next to the fire T-Rex. Both custom colored and looking real cool. Next up is a Jurassic World Dominion Battle Damage T-Rex. This is one of the newer figures from Jurassic World Dominion. It has a cooler paint job. You can see some gray and some other like interesting detailing all over its body. But of course, it has the iconic battle damage that you can turn on and off with the click of a button. So let's put this right next to our other T-Rexes. Here is another Extreme Battle Damage Predator. This is the Indominus Rex Extreme Battle Damage Edition. You can see that it has all the normal coloring over most of its body, but it's got that super cool Extreme Battle Damage feature on its side that you can turn on and off, just like the T-Rex figure. And this one has sound effects too. All right, let's put this Extreme Battle Damage next to the custom colored Indominus Rex. We've still got quite a few more T-Rexes in here. Check out this green T-Rex. This is the only adult green T-Rex figure that I think I have, other than the one that I custom colored a while back. This T-Rex figure is definitely one of my favorites just because of the uniqueness of the color. It's really cool. And I think we've got a little more space for another T-Rex in the middle shelf here. Let's see if we can get him in. The next T-Rex figure is this orange one. I think this is a little bit of an older figure. So this isn't from Jurassic World Dominion but it has that same snapping feature with its jaw that you can press the button on its neck for. Let's put this right next to the other orange T-Rex. <laughs> and another T-Rex figure. This one has a bit more typical coloring. It's got a light brown body with some darker detailing on the top. It also has the same jaw snapping button on the top of its head. This is a great classic looking T-Rex figure. 
put this on the middle shelf. I think we just have enough space for one more. Also, check it out. I've got two new figures to open up in this video, both from Jurassic World Dominion. This first one is the Kayla Watts and Pyro Raptor set. Let's open it up. So first up is the Kayla Watts figure. It's got the blue gloves, the green vest and brown jacket. It looks like it's got some type of torch or I think that's a shocking baton actually. And then there's the awesome looking Pyro Raptor figure. This is the smallest Pyro Raptor figure that I have so far. It's got some pretty cool detailing with the coloring. You can see the feathers all along its body, even on its arms there too, a little bit on the top of its head. So let's take these figures and put them on this higher up shelf right up here. The other brand new Jurassic World Dominion figure I have is the Extreme Damage Pyro Raptor. I have a few other figures like this one with the battle damage on the side, like the Coelurus. I think I have a Raptor with that battle damage. And this Pyro Raptor is just as cool. It's got the same iconic coloring for Pyro Raptors that you see. It's got the red on the top and the sides. It's got some black all over. It's got pretty good detailing with the feathering. And the coolest part of all, there's the battle damage. Press a button and it flips on and off on both sides. Let's put this figure right next to the other Pyro Raptor. Next up, we've got a Tarbosaurus figure. This figure is mostly gray, but it's got some bright red on its neck and its chin. And it's got some pretty cool striping along its side. And of course, all those huge horns running down its spine. Let's put this on the other side of this top shelf up here. Here is the Yang Chuanosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the light green body with some brown detailing. And with this figure, you can actually control its jaw by pressing this button on its tail too. Let's put this Yang Chuanosaurus figure right next to the Tarbosaurus. Here I've got a Scorpios Rex figure. This figure is pretty massive, though not quite as large as the T-Rex figures that you see over there. But it's got a pretty cool body. It's got the black detailing. It's got some bumps all over it. And it's got two action buttons. The first one operates the arms for slashing, and the second one operates the jaw. Let's put this Scorpios Rex on the lower shelf over here. Here is a Metriacanthosaurus figure with the yellow and green coloring on its body. It's a little bit of a smaller figure and it has one action button on its back to operate the jaw. Let's put this Metriacanthosaurus figure right next to the Parasaurolophus that I already had on the shelf. Looks like I've got a few Sarcosagus figures in here. This first one is a blue color. It's got the purple and red and orange detailing on its body. So let's put this right next to the Scorpios Rex figure. And this second Sarcosagus figure has the green body with the brown coloring on top. Let's put this Sarcosagus right next to the other one. Look at that. We've actually got another Scorpios Rex figure, but this one is a bit different. I think it's a little bit smaller and it has slightly different coloring. You can see that this one's a darker green color instead of just black and it still has the black top. Check it out. You can see the color difference when you put them right beside each other. So this one is quite a bit lighter, but still really scary looking. <coughs> this is a Ceratosaurus figure with the dark green and black detailing. This figure has the action slide button on its back, so you can get a bunch of different sound effects and roaring positions too. Let's put this figure right next to the Yang Chuanosaurus. <laughs> All right, here's another super scary looking predator from Jurassic World. This is the Endoraptor. This figure has the all black body, so it's perfect for sneaking around in the night with that gold stripe down both sides. Plus, this figure is super poseable. You can see that you can move its elbows, its arms, all the joints all over. So let's put this Endoraptor right here on the bottom shelf. <laughs> Here is our first Baryonyx figure of the bin. This Baryonyx has the battle damage on its side. You can see some on the neck and on its leg as well. Plus it has an action button to activate the jaw. Let's put this Baryonyx right next to the Ceratosaurus up top. Here is another Indominus Rex figure. It's quite a bit different from the other ones that we saw earlier. This one is like a baby Indominus Rex. It's pretty cool. It's got a few features on it too. It's got a button on its nose that you can press to get some sound effects. And you can press down on its tongue to have it eat. 
Let's put this little Indominus Rex on the very top shelf, right next to this Spinosaurus figure. Here's a weird looking dinosaur. I believe this is the Siamosaurus. This is a newer one from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got a really cool body. It's like colored with some gray and white and mostly dark blue. It's got the red spine and also the red face. And you can open and close the jaw using a button on its tail. Let's put this massive predator on the lowest shelf right down here. Next up is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur. I don't think they make that many of this species. This is the Concavenator. It's got the iconic super big hump on its back. Kind of looks like a horn or something like that. Plus it actually is an action button to activate the tail swinging. And of course you've got this huge purple face that looks pretty scary. And we're gonna put this Concavenator right next to the Baryonyx on the top shelf. <coughs> looks like we've got some Dilophosaurus figures in here as well. These figures are pretty small in size, but they're both super colorful and colored differently. This bottom one has brown and blue coloring with the white on the frills. And this other one has the green, black, and red and yellow coloring on its frills too. Let's place these in this corner right over here next to the Pyroraptors. <coughs> Check it out, it's a Dimetrodon figure. This figure also has the extreme battle damage on its side too. How cool is that? Let's see if we can put this Dimetrodon right next to Kayla Watts and the Dilophosaurus. Let's see, next up, we've got a Herrerasaurus figure. This one is the light gray blue color with the white striping on top. Let's put this Herrerasaurus next to the Concavenator. <laughs> Here's another Herrerasaurus figure. This one has the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And we'll put this one right next to the other Herrerasaurus. This looks like it's our first and only Velociraptor of this collection. This one also has the battle damage that you can open and close on the side too. And since this is also a smaller figure, let's put this next to the Herrerasaurus figure. Here are our last two predator dinosaurs of the bin. These are both baby T-Rex figures. This one is lighter in color and has a pretty small jaw, but it actually has an action button on its tail to activate the jaw. And this second baby T-Rex figure is a darker green color, and it's also got a bandage on its leg and a harness around its mouth too. Plus, I think this one is quite a bit more poseable too. So since these are T-Rexes, we gotta put them next to the larger T-Rexes.
Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.